Tyler Edlin. Welcome back to another episode of the Brush Sauce Theater. This episode, I want to address a student question, and they were wondering, how do you manage to use various key tones in your image while keeping the groups apart and separate, and, you know, while making them readable? And when, when they try to show haze, the distance between the two things, the groups end up merging together rather than apart. Is this all uh, a matter of practice and control of the contrast? Uh, yeah, basically it is in, in clear readable shapes and simplification. So if we look at this other example here, uh, we have a few comps and I'm gonna go over and try to simplify this. But usually before I even do something like that, I look at the major you know, shapes in the image to see kind of how things are reading. So this is basically three shapes, right? We have one, two, three. These two are more or less the same size. There's just as there's just as much negative space as there is positive. It's divided right down the composition. To me, that's an extremely weak uh, composition overall. Now, if I do the same thing on the other side, right, we have the focal point, which is more or less these walkers. We have a secondary element here in the foreground. And if I divide up all the other major shapes in the scene to try to figure out you know, how things are readable, it's a, it's a lot better. Uh, but yet there's still uh, various uh, tangents. There's not and there's a little bit of a lack of flow and it's not selling the scale and it's not selling the size of how big and powerful those walkers are. So that's something I'd like to address. This one is more or less the same thing. The shapes are nice. They're kind of overlapping. It has more of a flow, but it's kind of separating us, the viewer. You know, we're, we're far removed. We're on that, again, the third the third uh, tier up or the balcony in a, in, a, in a theater show, looking and observing down in. We want to get a little bit more into the action, I would say. So let's let's take a look at that. All right, so as you can see here, I've already used that empty spot on the sketch here to basically start blocking in uh, you know, really rough sketch here. It's pretty loose, but again, it's putting us, the viewer, down you know, to the ground, and we're looking up at the size of these. Now, what I did ahead of time is get a couple of tree silhouettes so I can use those uh, as clipping masks uh, to imply the forest in the background. I don't do this every time, uh, but more often than not, it, it does save me time, and it keeps the sketch super clean, uh, and readable and it, and it helps me group the values as the you know the original question you know kind of comes back to so I'm just using a few of these and I'm gonna just kind of bluntly just space those around in the background for now so in terms of gr value grouping I'm gonna start with my basic shapes here which I have the walkers now selected and I'm gonna make them basically like a singular value with the ground and separate basically this the sky out at this point so I'm in my head, what I'm thinking about is like, really, how can I uh, represent this image, this sketch with a as few valuables as po uh, values as possible and as few shapes as possible. That way I can trickle in the details and the complexity as necessary. So see, it kind of helped me at least start focusing on, first of all, what, what that negative space is. And now I, I'm even kind of closing the gap. So I think when working in values, uh, what I like to do is have the sketch either be really light or turn the sketch off entirely so that you can see structurally if, if your image, if your painting holds up without the sketch. So see right here, this is a first pass. Um, I tried to establish the image with as few brush strokes as possible. Uh, so if you consider like holding, you know, click down and just glazing over it, that's one brush stroke and I got all that information. Uh, it's still very, uh, you know, abstract, but we could see the shapes of the walkers. We know there's a ground plane and there's an established background and that's all with one essentially click. And so that that's one of the first, uh, you know, design decisions in terms of value grouping I usually try try to do on these. So now, as you can see, since this is just a uh, a quick sketch, I'm still playing with that negative space a little bit in the background. And now, as we kind of get closer to the viewer, as I have things selected, I want to get at least these uh, foreground walkers to appear a lot more. So if you count this basically, you know, as a, as a whole other brush stroke, right? I just glazed in the um, 
the walker with an airbrush with with the shape selected ahead of time uh you know that that was a lot of mileage a lot of bang for my buck if you want to say uh in terms of that move so almost to use another analogy think of these early block-ins like a game of chess and how many moves you know can you essentially beat your opponent and how how simple can i make it how direct can i make it that way you know and you're always keeping things uh, really, really simple, and you can look at it uh, still fairly abstractly to tell, you know, like in this case here, I just clipped the, uh, you know, I just cleaned it up, but now it's it's becoming, you know, exponentially more readable. We can tell what's happening, we know where that floor is, we can even see a little bit of that atmosphere. Uh, what I'm doing now with, with the glazing of the big shapes and how I'm kind of uh, using the pen pressure on the pen is I'm essentially starting to imply that the, the light in the scene is volumetric, that it has a physical presence to it. And yeah, once I'm kind of satisfied with how the shapes in the major silhouettes are reading, then I try to you know really figure out, okay, where, where is that focal point first of all? and is it reading or do I have all the major elements in my scene blocked in in this case I didn't the the, the artist still intended that for them to for there to be ground soldiers so I'm just again using the same trick I did with the trees I have just a few people that I uh, selected and I'm using as a clipping mask to get the the block in and of course the scale so we can see characters all the way in the back beneath the legs and all the way in the foreground there's like a buddy system going on so that's starting to add a little bit to the narrative into the function of how this unit or the squad begins to work so now if I want to embellish the focal point back here which I do I'm using light again to start to chisel in like the lights coming from that left it's hitting this water on the right and now I can start to play with light as another design mechanic as another shape dynamic to start expressing what I want to say. So if we have again the, the soldier silhouettes back there and I chose to highlight just one side of them, we can, even with very little information, with very few brush strokes, we could see that there's, there's soldiers back there going through the swamp. And without getting heavily designy on these walkers, I just want to embellish a few of these forms within those shapes, within those silhouettes to show that they're being lit to some degree or another. And then I'm just kind of going back in and glazing a little bit of light over those soldiers. And again, one of my, my, my mantras and one of my cardinal rules that I live everything by is when in doubt, just try to keep things simple. It's when things get convoluted, overcomplicated, and messy, and you know just sloppy. You're going to make and spend a lot more time in your paintings sorting things out and kind of cleaning up the mess. Whereas if you come in with a really solid plan, uh, you'll probably find yourself a lot less frustrated. I know at least I do in, in my own experience. So now I'm just kind of cutting some shapes in and around the legs to, again, work on that volumetric lighting and to push the forms to show the overlapping of them when necessary. So all in all, you know, this is, it's only probably 10, maybe 15 minutes into the sketch, you know, counting the laborious time it takes to make the selections with the lasso by hand. You know, I've edited that out ahead of time. But yeah, it's it doesn't take long once you have your idea to really figure out, first of all, you know, is it going to work? You know, structurally, is it, how is the foundation? That That's what this episode is about. That's what this demonstration is about is finding the structure of your image first and foremost you know within a very short amount of time so you can even make that decision you know is it worth committing to or should I shelve it or or go back and redesign it so yeah I just wanted to show a little bit of that uh, that mist or that atmosphere or that dust you know getting kicked up by these uh, you know massive walkers and stuff just to kind of add a little bit of flavor to the the tone uh, or the mood of that image but it, it's basically almost there it's saying everything I wanted to say at this level and if you get if you can get an image to work at this level then you can decide a course of action you need to really finish it off and polish it up am I gonna go back and use 3d am I gonna find photography do I need to get additional references 
and then kind of begin that process of, of just pushing it to a finish. But I certainly would recommend trying to do images just at this basic level, you know, a lot. Like, if, particularly if you know your compositions are weak, if you know your values are weak. If you struggle with anything in general in this video, I, this is the, one of the best ways to practice it, is just to try to represent what your image is trying to say in a really simple and direct way. So again, I'm just using some of these shapes and flipping masks to just imply a little bit of the mechanicalness of this walker. It's, it's not designed and it's not resolved, but uh, just for the sake of this demonstration, I just wanted to put a little bit of information up there so it didn't look quite as garish. Because they're kind of like these gorilla pod things. I have no idea. They have the guns on the backs. And probably some in the front. But yeah, I would have to get in there and really assess the design of them specifically. But this is more... Th this video... This little demonstration was more about the global aspects of things. How can you keep things separate? Is it light on dark? Or is it dark on light? Is the transition you know, soft and subtle? Or is you you're using a, a high point of contrast to show where that focal point is? But that basically wraps this up. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, definitely subscribe if you didn't, if you want to see more content like this in the future. As always, leave me comments and suggestions below if you have any ideas or topics to cover. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web. Feel free to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.